married if my daughter engaged in sexual activities at her teenage age. I'll be very worried. Oh, I believe that is not the right time for uh, teenage girls to engage in such acts. That will make me worry. Yes, I do. Why would you be worried? Uh, because uh, that can lead uh, into having into having pregnancy when she's not ripe for that pregnancy. At least she should complete her school and uh, she should be working. And then when having pregnancy, she will be able to care for the child. I'll be very worried if those are the early stages of their teens indulging sex. But now we know that of 17, 18, 19, many of them are in tertiary level. And then I wouldn't be worried so much because at that level, by the education, they know and understand whatever they do. So as a father, what would you be doing about it if you hear that your child, your 17-year-old or 18-year-old child is pregnant? 17 years at the tertiary level understands the negative effects of pregnancy at that age. So there I know at that stage it won't be a worry to me because she herself understands what she's doing. Do you educate them on sex? Yes, I do. How often do you do? Well, at least once in a while we sit down to discuss about the sex, that problem that they face at school. At times, peers can be discussing about sex. And if I don't educate uh, my child about sex, their peers will educate them. Yes, I do. As a, as a female teacher, I even talk to my students about uh, sex. And I advise them to stay away from early sex. Okay, because uh, I don't think they are ready for it now. And the dangers involved in having early sex, it's, it will be too much on them. My biological children, I would say I do it indirectly. Indirectly because they are fortunate to have a mother who is also a teacher. So the, as parents, we discuss, but I hand over such responsibility to the mother. Why do you hand responsibility to the mother? Uh, all my children are girls and they are, they are closer to their mother, they understand their mother, their mother also have a lot of discussions with them. So I think it would be more appropriate as a woman to directly discuss those issues with. But when there are problems, she comes back to me as a father and we talk about it. But directly she's in charge. Indirectly I discuss it with her. Sex is when two individuals, a male and a female, come together and agree to have sexual intercourse. I know that sex is between two adults that are married because it's in the Bible that only two people can have sex. Um, sex was designed by God for two adults in order for birth to, okay. How did you get to know about sex? It was taught in school. My dad taught me and also my teachers. I, I want you to be very blunt with me as possible. No, you've never had sex. Have you ever? No. <laughs> Have you ever had sex? No. You well. No. In school, we were we taught that when you have sex at this age, the lady you have sex with might get pregnant and then it may cause a lot of issues. She might become drop out of school and then it may cause so many problems for both families. And I have a plan for my life and I don't want anything to interrupt it. I can become a dropout and therefore I want to be able to achieve my aim. So there's no way I want to have sex so that it will act as an interruption to my education. It is for two adults and I'm too young to have sex at this age. So apart from school that you had sex education, where else do you want to have sex education? The house. The house. With my parents. What, what do you want them to tell you about sex? Are you not, do you feel shy when they're talking to you about sex? No, because it's a normal thing every parent has to teach their children. So when do you intend having sex? When, you when I'm grown and married. When you're grown and married? Yes. And you? The same thing, when I'm grown and married. Oh, okay. So when were you exposed to the knowledge of sex? When I was... About 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. How about about 12? About 11 years. So I don't know the age. I knew sex from childhood. I, I was I was I was counselled about sex from childhood. When what childhood means what age? What age? Maybe let, let me say the maximum is eight years because I was I was being told that no don't this thing is not good for you. 
because So what is the appropriate age to have the sex talk? And how do you even do it? I thought it would be good to hear from seniors, people who have experienced it. Uh, and so we've got the beautiful Stephanie Benson joining us. Good morning to you. Good morning. I feel so awkward with a hat on. No, it's fine. But I, I have to tell everybody, I didn't know it was TV. <laughs> I thought it was radio. And then this is how I dress for radio. I'm sorry, so forgive me. No, you don't have to apologize because you look fantastic. Look at yourself. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, as for Prince, me and you, you say with team. You say with team. Maury, Maury. But you're still <laughs> senior. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's yeah, senior? Yes, he, yeah. he's senior. Well, he's got four it. children. I've got four kids. That doesn't make him senior, though, because a 20 year old could have four children. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yes, they can. I mean, don't you know nowadays they start really early, like 15. It's quite sad. <laughs> but you've got five. I have five, yes. Wow. So you're senior, senior. I am senior, senior. I'm, I'm the senior of the seniors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you both for, for being here. All right, thank to you. Share. I've got two little boys. Oh. So me, I'm junior, junior. Cry. You do. Oh, no, you're just starting. Yeah, it's just like you're not even non-existent. Yeah. <laughs> but is this, is this something that... Uh, crossed your mind along the line, Stephanie, as a mother? To, yeah, to talk to my children about sex? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, see, in my house, we're very, very free. Um, I walk around the house naked. I don't really worry about things like that. Um, my husband was a little bit more conservative, but then, you know, when he saw that we were all very comfortable with ourselves, he sort of, you know, he, he's then, you know, able to walk around the house naked, not intentionally just you know by chance so wait, wait, if you want to go and grab when you say naked like naked naked like naked naked oh i mean it's only body parts i mean what do we have to be shy about you know and my my sons are uh, you know are a, a black men so i mean and i sometimes i understand that they can be a little bit more you know introverted when it comes to showing themselves am i wrong and i didn't want them to be that way i wanted them okay. to be a bit freer oh. i remember when i was three i used to um, have baths and showers with my father and that was pretty nice actually I, I like that you know why are you laughing I like it's not funny it was really cool <laughs> stop it my you daughter keeps it. asking me for that oh yeah she wants to have a bath with me yeah but you don't Five year old, but you're I not don't. comfortable yeah but she wants sometimes when I'm bathing she comes in there looks and goes away yeah because they're curious at that yeah. time so I mean um, I remember I was young and my father will be having the shower running down and and I'll be holding onto his leg and occasionally I'll get curious and then and, and flick, but then he just tuck it. Cause can I talk like that? Is that okay? We're talking about something. no, 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 yeah. Please so he'll ahead. tuck it in, in, you know, in between his thighs, and I'll, I'll be upset. And then he looks like a girl. I'm thinking, Daddy, now you look like a girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just think it's so really, you know, it's really real. We shouldn't hide away from it. Hmm. I spoke to my son when he was eight. My children when they were eight, about sex. You know, I had a book. And I wrote everything down, and well, there's a book was there, and I tried to explain it, how it works, the body parts, what his is and, and what um, hers is, and what it can do, and what's inside. I think it's really important. Let's not leave it too late. Let's, you know, because the TV will tell them before we do. But did they know something about it before your conversation? Yes, yes. Okay. My, my, um, they, my, ch my girls did not so much, but my girls and my boys did. My son, especially. I talk about my son, JJ. He's quite something, that one. <laughs> yes. He's a typical black man. Yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Prince, uh, when was the right time? Well, um, I, I, I have three daughters, actually. The first one is a girl. The second one is a girl. They are all developing very fast. Yeah. And, and that scares every father. Yeah. So that's when I told mom that, look, Charlie, the way this lady is developing, we have to take care. We have to introduce her because she knows about sex already. We are not going to introduce it to her because TV is their friend. They keep yeah. talking with these smartphones. They go on the net, etc. You don't know what they do. So we need to talk to her. So I started. If somebody touches you there, let me know. <laughs> you know? But that's not the kind of conversation you were talking about. I was just you there. wanting to start that conversation. It was like I was feeling a bit uncomfortable. So that was the way to break the ice. <laughs> Has anybody been touching you when you're walking on the street? Do guys call you, say, yes, daddy. 
do you mind them? Oh, no, I don't mind them at all. I told them that, look, if you do this around this time, they, they'll mess your life up. They'll rape you, and you don't want to have that. That's scary. Do no. You, you want that? <laughs> and she says, no. You know, some of them are a bit, uh, I would say, very trusting. But you're scaring them doing that. I need to scare them away from the No, sex. you can't do that. No, that's my strategy. That's my strategy. Because you're mad. Oh, terrible. Yeah. You should have left it up to your wife to do it. No, I feel like doing it as well, you know, because my wife is like, Oh, I'll talk to her at the right time. Oh, we are ladies. We know when to do it. We see the signs before it comes. I said, look, I don't want to see any signs. I want them to know that it's pretty dangerous and they shouldn't engage in sex, you know, especially with the STDs, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, I, I oh, don't yes. want to be a dad yes. who will be running to the hospital because my little girl has HIV or a sexually transmitted disease. I don't want that. Yeah. But I'm too busy for that. So I'd rather scare you of it, too, you know. So that has worked? It has worked so far. So far. That's what you think. <laughs> well, well, I will, well, yeah, maybe what you're saying may be true. Because the first one now is in the university. Okay. She does what she does. She's in a hostel. So clearly, um, well, I believe that so she's So do you still have the conversation well. that she... Yes, I tell her that, look, make sure that you are done with school before you engage in relationship. Because sometimes it takes your mind away from your studies. Because you get broken hearted, and instead of concentrating on your books, you are thinking about your emotions. That's Plus, like I'm paying school fees. Straight jacket. Ask your question. <laughs> Did you wait till you, at what point, and don't lie, this is TV, and God is watching you. <laughs> Did you have sex before, you know, um, you should? Because if it works for girls, it should work for guys too. Yes, I would say I, I had sex at the age of um, 17. <laughs> Don't lie. 17. Don't lie. You were 15. You know I'm psychic, right? No. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, those <laughs> ones were abuse. No. No. Those so ones were happened. abuse. Yes, I was so abused. So you are abused. See, I, I told you I'm psychic. And sometimes <laughs> it's by the so-called house, house helps, girl. etc. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. they use it for the experiments. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's how come I got to know about sex. But it didn't, yeah, did it didn't. I was very young. Horrible. I was around yeah. 10 years you old. You see, I knew that you started before. Yeah. Because, you're, I, because of the way you're talking about <laughs> how you introduced it to your children, I had a feeling that something like that had happened before. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. I know sometimes but happens you, at the flip side of yeah. parents. So sometimes yeah. you need to Because scare of what them you've been exposed yes, to. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. in fact, so because scared. of my experience, I had to also put some fear in them. That's Especially that's being ladies. If they were guys, the guys, I don't really bother that much. I have a guy. Well, you still should because there yes. are, um, you know, gay relationships too, which are pretty normal. So that could also lead to a, a boy being um, abused. Um, abused. I mean, it, yes. it happens both ways. So it's not just the girls. Because, you know, I speak to my children about all of that. I mean, I'm sort of pretty open to any kind of relationship so far as they're happy. I don't really put restrictions on, okay, you shouldn't date a guy, you shouldn't date if there's a guy to a guy. I mean, you know, life is life. Um, but. I think you have to sort of be careful not to scare them too much. So what, because what, what, because you, you seem to think that strategy of saying things that would make them afraid doesn't, it's not the best. I think it's not the best because, you know, by doing that, by doing that, what happens is the kids um, then, you know, it's like when it, you have a child and the child is, um, you tell the child, don't put your hand in the fire. What does it do? You know, or don't go near the fire, it's too hot. Please don't do that. What do they do? They usually want to like go and and and, and have a hand in it. Mm. Well, it. It's just normal for kids because they're interested. They want to explore. They want to be able to to know for themselves. So if you scare them, they think ah maybe that is wrong. Maybe it's right, but nah, let me go and see. So it's best not to. It's best to say that. Listen, when you feel you're ready, come and talk to me. And that's what I did to my children. I said, if you feel you're ready, come and talk to me. Then we can talk about what you need, how you need to protect yourself, whether he's the right person or not. Because that's, that's, I think that's more appropriate. But did they? They did. All of them? Every single one of them. But my son is, um, was 14 when he, and he was the first one to have sex in the family. He was 14 with an 18 year old, but he's six foot three and he looked big and tall. So the girl must have thought he was older. He just allowed it. So he didn't come to tell me, he told his sister that he was ready. Um, and his sister is four years older than, and, than him. And she came to tell me. So I sat him down and I said, have you already? And he had like a couple of days before. And I said, okay, did you protect yourself? And he said, yes, because we'd had that sex talk when he was eight. Oh, okay. So he did. You know, because he knows we're all very um, liberal. My girls actually didn't up until 
my daughter was in university, she was 21, and when she was about to, she came to me and says, Mom, I've been dating this guy for two years now, and um, all the time in university. It's, I think it's time I want to, um, can I? And I said, well, let me meet him first. I met him. He was a bit of an idiot, but, you know, <laughs> I, I sort of just thought, ah, oh, she's in love with him. You know, two, almost three years. I'm not going to stop her because she's probably going to do it. So I just talked talk to him about being very careful because he's a Nigerian boy, and, you know, and he also has a good background with the, his family. So we had that talk, and I just left him alone to it. I mean, I don't know what point it did, but I know she's not a virgin right now. You know, most often than not, the reason why I would hesitate to use her strategy is that sometimes they don't plan to have sex. Mm. They move around with some notorious guys who find ways of that making your That is how you bring them up. It's how you bring them up. No, sometimes it's about peer pressure. They're no. in the company. They go out together. Oh, so let's go to my house. They're a group of friends. I mean, it happens. You go to one person. The parents have traveled. You go to the house to have fun. You know, and these things happen. Some even drag your, 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 your children into having sex. Some of the guys are really bad. Mm. So they won't have that opportunity of wanting to have sex to come and tell you. Sometimes it just happens. So sometimes I try to scare them away from such situations. No. I'll say, look, don't drink any kind of drink. They tell, they tell you this is a cocktail. Don't drink any cocktail. Go for your regular mineral. Don't try anything. No, so I try as much as possible to look at those the, other mm, aspects. Okay. The accidental sexual so encounters. So how about how about, the, how about their own how about their own how about their own female then, friends and their them. own if it's a boy, his own friends, because sometimes the pressure could be coming from their own very close friends. Yes, those who have actually had the experience of doing it. Sometimes yeah. we tell them, have you done that before? Hey, me, I did it too. And sometimes when they fall in a company of bad people, they feel like, oh, they are left out. Oh, that's for me, Charlie, I don't know what time is it. Yeah. My friends all know, oh, Charlie, you, Charlie, you are daft. So you should, you should worry about that. Yes, that is also a concern for me. And I tell them that, look, they are all coming from different homes. You're also coming from a different room. I'm a typical African, so I like speaking like the African man. That's how I was brought up. <laughs> so you're a typical a, 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 <laughs> every man. Every man. Traditional. Yeah, traditional. So I tell them that, look, please do what I tell you. When you are right of age, you can engage in There sex. are some children who would make you believe that they're doing what yes. you've, you've told them to do, but <laughs> really they're not. They're yeah. just pretending around you. Especially if you're scaring because them because they will not come and talk to you. It's, you know, it's like talking about drinks. You're right. It does happen. That's happening everywhere. And I always tell my daughter that, listen, when you go out to a, a club, if you leave your drink, don't come back and drink it. Make sure that your drink is close to you at all times. Otherwise, if you have to leave it and you go on the dance floor, don't go back and drink yeah. it. That's a bad. So, you know, it's, it's how you talk. If you scare kids, they will not come and talk to you about something that's happened to them. Because let's just say what you're, the scenario where she is um, among the people that she shouldn't be around. Mm. And something happens to her. And you've told her, you've scared her into telling her that, don't you dare ever go in among. Do you think she's going to come and say, Dad, I made that mistake? She won't tell you. Well, um, that's true. So, that's true. On, on, so on the back of that, uh, once you haven't told them that, it means... They don't know about condom use. Well, um, to be very honest, um, my first girl knows about it. I mean, we had a conversation about that, especially when she was going to the university, mm. you know, because I had to tell her. Because there I know I don't have any taps. I can't have any taps on there. So, so, so how, how do you do it as a dad? Like, if you must do it, please use a condom. No, or ask I, the guy to use a condom. I saw her with a guy, okay. actually, her mate. And I was like, oh, who is this guy? Oh, that is a friend. And so you are not in any relationship. He said, no. And I said, oh, if you are, tell me, let me know. You are a big girl now. And she says, oh, no, daddy, no. Okay. And I said, don't forget, you know about condoms. So when she laughs it off. And she says, oh, I know about all those things. Daddy, I'm a big girl. I'm in the law school. And I said, oh, OK. okay. <laughs> yes, so you know what to do. So it's like, I, it gave me some confidence that mm. she, she knew all those things. She learned to herself. And um, for me, I was very comfortable when she told me that. Yeah. But because of the guy she was working with, <laughs> you know, I said, Charlie, make sure every time you, 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 you try as much as possible to use a condom, if you have to. Oh, daddy, I'm not doing that now. I said, that's very good. Please make sure you finish your education. You're very young. You're almost done. And after you have the whole 
life ahead of you to experiment and do everything you want to do. But if you do it before time, yeah. sometimes you might end up like, she has a cousin, and I made reference to the cousin. You see what happened <laughs> to her. Do you want to be like that? He said, no, dad. So I said, then you have to do what I'm telling you. Yeah. Luckily, around there are examples for us to point okay. out to. So, so she can relate. She can relate to what I'm talking about. Because if you don't listen, this is what happens to yeah. you. If you listen, you see that guy, you see he's doing well, this is what happens when you listen. So sometimes I feel it's a bit crude, I understand. Lord, Lord. But it works out for some of us, you know. I, I, listen, it, it won't. It but won't if we count. look about, uh, if we look back, your own self, how, how was it communicated to you? My mother spoke to us about um, sex. Actually, she used to say, um, you know, please stay a virgin until you get married and whatnot. But it's how she said it. She made it seem, because my mother was a very, you know, a very regal kind of person. Everywhere she went, men would stop just to look at her. You know, she was just, and, and she knew her, her sexual, you know, um, uh, you know, power. Um, and that was very beautiful to see, actually. But then she would, she had, and watching her, you might think she was just so, she would go from one guy to another to another, yeah. but she wasn't that type at all. So she used to be able to just tell us that, you know, understand who you are, understand they're going to get attention. But make sure that if a man can wait for you, they'll be the most beautiful thing oh. you'll ever, you know, um, experience. And because she was so liberal about it, I was, that stayed in there. Oh, so, so you listened, knew, actually? No, I listened because she didn't threaten me. Okay. I mean, because as we're five girls, and when, you know, she would just say, you know, I'd rather, and when men came to the house, she'd sit with them, chat, and, you know, and I remember when I met my husband, she met um, John, and I remember actually just one night, spending a night in my husband's um, house, we were mad at the time, and he didn't touch me. And I remember going back to my mom and, say, and saying, Mom, I think he's gay. <laughs> 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 and then mom said, no, it's because he respects you. you see, and that was such a beautiful thing. So for me, it was really important to, mm -hmm. to feel like I was in power. I didn't feel the, the pressure, I mean, my friends all had. And I just didn't feel the pressure mm -hmm. of it because I felt, you know, hey, you know, when I do open my, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be yeah. in my, on my terms. I felt, and I love that power. And all my sisters were like that. Akos is like that, Belinda's like that, Raja is like that. And Maureen, my little sister, um, was like that when she married. I mean, and I think it's just something that's yeah. because we understand that we are strong women, we're beautiful women. We, we, we have a power. And I don't, I don't need to, I like that tension. So it, it comes back to how um, empowered, how the individual, how your child it's looks you at bring him or up. herself as yes. well. That's if you me. feel, yeah, you're going to It wasn't something. communicated to me. Nobody talked yeah. to me about sex. See, that's yeah. why you're scaring your children. But nobody, <laughs> nobody <laughs> talked to me about sex either. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, I nobody didn't have did. that mother-daughter <laughs> chats. Nothing. Nothing. I, I don't know. Now I'm thinking about it. Yourself, yeah. I don't think so. I think my father was, my father wasn't worried. He he was never worried about me. I thought he was thinking maybe she's a matured girl. She can figure herself out. Right. Like yeah. yeah. So normally yeah. there was no sex talk. I'm bringing we had. Yeah. I don't know about you. Let me quickly I'm activate the phone lines. Wow. Let's get some phone calls coming okay. through. Zero three zero two two one one six nine one zero two zero three zero two. 211-69102. We're sharing experiences right here. If you're learning a few things, if you think any of the strategies would work for you, it would be good to hear in your own experience as well. Let's read some messages. Uh, here's one. Someone says sex... Um, oh, okay. I'm not going to read that. We're not glorifying. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to other places, Charlie. Weird minds. Um, okay. All right, so this one says, my friends actually initiated me to have sex, even when I could not oh. tell my, my girlfriend I want to have sex with her. That's Hamza uh, Nabulu sending that message. This one says, uh, okay, so uh, Godin, uh, the new Northeast region, Nalirugu, that's where you're sending this message. You're enjoying this conversation. Well, the whole idea is for all of us to share experience. If you have something to say. Please give me a call, 302 Um So I have a six-year-old and I have a four-year-old. What would be your advice, seniors? Um, I feel you have a long way to go because at this age, you Do just I have to make now? sure. No, you just have to make sure that they don't catch you having sex with your husband. Okay. Because for me, that is where some of them start getting corrupted. Sometimes they try it amongst themselves. If you mm. have kids, if you are not lucky, if you are not lucky, you end up teaching them they want to experiment 
within first. Okay. So you have to make sure they don't catch you mm. in the act. That will make them very curious. Okay. And apart from that, make sure that you don't leave your little guy or little girl with people you don't trust. Mm. Because sometimes they will corrupt them before you even get the opportunity mm. of even grooming them or talking to them okay. about sex. Let me speak to uh, Ben. Ben is in Kumasi. Ben Donko, good morning to you. Thank you for your time and let's hear you. Good morning, Amari. Yes, Ben. Please go so ahead. You, you and uh, some of us share the same uh, experience where we didn't have the expectation of sex. Like Adam to see. So all of us came along. I think the right thing to talk about sex is when you see people, okay, when you see them starting to have some um, just from the opposite, opposite sex, mm -hmm. you see, anytime they are not to cover themselves as side of the opposite sex, then it means they are having some special, you know, uh, um, upbringing in their head. Okay. They differ. I mean, some of them, you talk about uh, to them, about the sex, then they are still opposed. So that's what they mm. So when you talk to them, whatever cash or what they say, they would want to be there. But in the sex that you say, if they want to say that you want to have sex, uh, it's just dream. So it's also a thing that dream before they have sex. Mm. I'm not going to be in there. Okay, this is Ben, your line is getting a bit cracky. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Hello, Ben. Okay, let, let me go to Solomon. Solomon Adam. Ben, apologies, but I think we, we got the import of your message, except that it was cracking a bit. Solomon is in Tamale. Hello, Solomon. Hello, Solomon. Hello, oh. good morning. Hello, kindly speak up a bit for me. Good, good morning. Good morning, Solomon. Please go ahead. Yeah, I... I'm Solomon, you're still very low. Yeah, I, I, I'm monitoring your program. It, oh. it, it's been good. I have three thoughts, eh? Hello. Hello, Solomon. Please go ahead. Yeah, I have three thoughts, and uh, I'll be monitoring what is going on mm. on your platform. But I, I just want to say that um, uh, it, it, that the best way to uh, solve this problem is for us to teach our children the fear of God. If the students have the fear of God in them, then that alone will guide them not to even go there mm. with the use of contraceptives and other things wouldn't have that much. Okay. I the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of Oh wisdom. Okay. So, so the fear, the fear, the fear of God. But do you teach them that this is condom, this is this. If you can't, uh, yeah. if you can't abstain, you know, this is what you do. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, once once you teach them the fear of God. Then you 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 back it up with these things we talk okay. about. Okay. Okay. All right. It's like everybody is looking at uh, the condom, mm. and then what to do is no. I get you. you. I get you, Solomon. We have to move on to Nanekia because of time. We got your point. Thank you very much, Nanekia. We'll do it very briefly. Nanekia is in Takaradi. Good morning to you. Yes. Yeah, good morning, Mamaji. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I hope you're you are well too. Yes, I'm very well. Nice. Um, I just want to say something. Please do. Okay. I am 26 and I'm still a patient. Okay. But I didn't have a chance to be taught of this thing, especially in the primary or the essence. It was even the essence. Mm. The teachers were a little bit shallow because there was sometimes, uh, I don't know if there was just so bold. But what I would like to say is that even without the teachers and our parents, we have phones. Why do we have the Facebook and stuff? Mm. There are a lot of things we can learn from there. Yeah. Because most of my friends have gotten pregnant. And I have That doesn't mean I don't want to. I, I know the consequences of it. Mm. I would like to tell each and every one, especially the young lady, we shouldn't so much involve ourselves. Even if we do, I don't believe it's all the house or the school. We have things. I mean, we could go, we can learn a more, can learn more of it. Mm. Sure. For ourselves, if, if not for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Nanekia, thank you very much for sharing your personal experience with us uh, here on the show. We're grateful. Thank you. Um, so sometimes even when you haven't had the talk, you have your own individual mind mm -hmm. and you can make decisions it's for yourself. It's good upbringing. I think, you know, when you have a strong upbringing, I don't understand children can have great upbringings and sometimes be very weak and, 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 and get, you know, taken in by peer pressure. That happens. It's very real. Mm. Peer pressure is really real. But... Um, I think sometimes they can 
even you know um, when they're not told the right things from the home yeah um, they, it, it can have an, um, uh, a positive or negative effect because they don't they don't want to do what they've seen they just want to be different so it's all you know sometimes it can be in the mind mm. um, but parents have a lot to do with how our children turn out so we have to take responsibility for there's that. technology around these days when you were growing up it wasn't the same no yeah so things are things are in 3d these days <laughs> yes yeah. I mean sometimes you're watching TV you, you probably done it I mean you yours are too young and then um, a sex scene comes up and people are kissing I How say, do hey. you feel? Because are you you probably pick them up and throw them out the room. No, no, no. Sometimes <laughs> I say, my friend, get, get that away from me. Oh, you still do you still well, do yeah, that? Yeah, 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 exactly. I, 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 I had a feeling that <laughs> <laughs> This is not a kiss to watch. Or sometimes I put it off. Or sometimes when they see the scenes themselves and they start <laughs> making it out. <laughs> you see, you but, can't but do that. It's sometimes so but my four-year-old <laughs> knows what kissing is. Yes. yes. And they even yeah. practice it with me. Sometimes my girl. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. you know. But I feel you need to give your children love. If you're yes. a dad, yes. you need to show a lot of love to your mm. growing daughters. Because sometimes when they are deprived of that, they look for it elsewhere. Well, yeah. That's why daughters sometimes refer to their dads as their first boyfriends. You must have that connection with your daughter. That one is easier to... Mm. I'm my son's first girlfriend. Good. You see, that is a very good strategy. You know, so it's like, they always come to He has to a you, girlfriend now? Them, he has a girlfriend you know. now. So you're and like rivals, right? Oh, absolutely. Is she comfortable with you? She's very That's comfortable That's always a problem. Me. Are you sure? She's very comfortable with me. And the thing is, she's a white girl with a big ass. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, I remember when she got up once, I was looking at her thinking, wow, this kid went for it. Oh, she? Oh, so she's, she's actually three years older than my son. And um, very mature. My son is also very mature. He owns his own business. So, I mean, um, it, it, my son needed somebody who was older. Mm. Although I didn't push it, but mm. he needed somebody who was older just to sort of bring him in check because he gets a lot of attention wherever we, he goes. So he needs somebody who can, you know, put him in the. I understand each and every one of my kids, and they understand themselves, their weaknesses. So when they have any weakness, right now my, my second daughter has just broken up with her boyfriend. Mm. And mm. she rang me from um, London, I'm crying, I know what to do. Mm. I said, you know, this is a good experience. You need to go through all this when you're in school. No, she's an accountant. Okay, she's then that's good. 26 year old accountant. That's good. Making her own money, owns her own yeah. house. You know, she's a very, but it's, mm. they're still able to come to me and talk to me and I'm yeah. very sad. And you know, so when I go back, I'm gonna spend three days with her in her house in London. And, and some some, some of the shopping. messages I've received, for instance, uh, this is from Stephen uh, in Odumasi Krobo, says that it depends on the society in which you're being brought up. Sounds to me like, I mean, you have been exposed to uh, no, other I cultures. Was, I was brought and, up and in reflect. this country. Yeah, that's what she well. said. You know, I was brought up till I left when I was 14 years old. So my, both my parents, my father was pretty old um, when he had me. He died at 84 years old. He was 60-something when he had me. So, you know, and, and my mother was very young. So I had both, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think I'm typically Ghanaian. I just, my parents didn't have that typical Ghanaian yeah. mentality. I that, is, well, that is the difference. Yeah, yeah because yeah. your parents didn't have I, the typical Ghanaian yeah. mentality. We've so got they to, brought you up in a normal way. We've got to wrap up. Like, like, what's wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> We've got to wrap up in a bit. Uh, but let's talk about, I understand you have a new song. Oh, yes. Okay, now this is perfect. This is, leads beautifully into the song. This song is called All About Love. And it's about making a commitment to somebody. Oh. It's all about love. It's all about the family we share. It's all about the memories of life we ought to bear and children. There's one with it's you so and beautiful. Samini. Oh, my God. Ah. I was just like that one. Is, yes. this, is, is this close? Is this small? Is this different? Oh, this is about love and commitment and marriage. Ah, okay. This is going to be the best marriage song. Every time anybody's getting married, this is a song that they should use. Okay, so please introduce it to us so we wrap up. But thank you so much, uh, the two of you, for your time this morning. It's been and a pleasure. Talking yeah. about sex? Let's ah. talk about sex, baby. Yeah. yeah. So please you. kindly introduce yeah. your song. Yeah. Let's yeah. hit it. All right, I'd love to introduce this song. It's called All About Love, and it's, um, it's about a commitment to another person that you love, that you want to share your life with. And it's also for people who've been married for a long time, just renewing your vows. So please listen and enjoy All About Love. Okay, we, we will enjoy that in a little bit, in just a little bit. So stay with us. We'll bring you that sound. Uh, but we also got uh, some beautiful children coming through from the Ghana International School. We'll talk about uh, a program that's coming up. So stay with us, Stephanie. We will drop that song. We're talking all about love. 
but thank you so much for being here. It's been ever pleasure. so beautiful. You're inspiration to a lot of girls, a lot of oh, women. So. so that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Prince. Thank you. Stay with you. Yeah. We'll be your yeah. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs>